Hi, I'm Ellie, and this is your Weekly Theatre News Recap, the only show on the internet where you can get your theatre news read by me. And isn't that special? This is a show where we recap all of the past week's West End and UK touring theatre news. And if you are interested in that, if you want to stay up to date with all of this theatre news, then make sure you hit subscribe because I do these every single week. But let's start, as we always do, with our casting news. Curious case of Benjamin Button. This is the first uh, casting announcement we got this week. Uh, there was things that came up before it. This is just the order I choose to do it in. There's no method to this madness. And let's just go through the casting announcement. <laughs> We have a brand new Benjamin Button stepping up to the fold, and this is John Daglish, who you may know from Sylvia, you may know from Sunny Afternoon. He is going to be our new Benjamin Button, replacing Jamie Parker, who played the role at the Suffolk Playhouse last year. I am really sad to see uh, that Jamie Parker isn't returning. I thought that the timing of it with, you know, it coming a month after Next to Normal might mean that he would return to the role, but that hasn't happened. So I guess we've got to wait and see what this new Benjamin Button is going to be like. And I think this does also mean that we've had a new Benjamin Button every time this show has been produced, which is also kind of cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I, I was very shocked when the news first came out, but now I'm a bit more optimistic. If we wanted returning cast members, we do have them, as most of the ensemble of the show has announced that they will be returning, including Matthew Burns, Jonathan Charles, Unga Cox, Anna Fordham, Philippa Hogg, Damien James, Anne Markison, Jack Quarton, Benedict Salter, and additionally, we have a brand new ensemble member in Elliot McKenzie. What is very cool about this is that Philippa Hogg uh, and I, I, somebody else, I can't remember who else, but I know that Philip Hogg has done this show in all three iterations, which is, again, really cool, really fun to see. Uh, what is very interesting about this casting announcement is we don't have our female lead. It hasn't been announced that Molly is returning, so... I don't know if we're going to have a new female lead alongside our Benjamin Button. We'll just have to wait and see. Next up, A Night with Janice Joplin has announced further casting. We know our Janice Joplins, and now we know our ensemble. Who are Kelisha Amaris, Georgia Bradshaw, Chulwi Lena Montanga, and Danielle Steers. These guys will be playing the Joplinaires. <laughs> As well as being the backing vocalists, they will also play roles such as Aretha Franklin, Etta James, Nina Simone, and Bessie Smith. Very exciting. If you're a fan of Janis Joplin, you've got to head to the Peacock Theatre this summer, specifically between the 21st of August and the 28th of September. Very, very cool. And finally in casting news this week, this was actually a quite a quiet casting news week. We, the day after I posted my video, we got the full cast announcement of The Devil Was Prada. We know our leads, we have a couple more uh, supporting characters here, and a full ensemble to dive into. So, joining the previously announced cast will be James Darch as journalist Christian, with Reese Whitfield joining as Andy's long-term boyfriend, Nate. We also have the full ensemble, there's a lot of names here, and they will be in the description down below. This is very cool. I, I love the way that they've done the casting announcement for Devil Wears Prada. I love these videos that they've done introducing each of their leads. The actual photo shoot they did was like a cover of a magazine, which is genius. So... I guess we now just gotta wait and see what the show is like. That's all your casting news this week, let's move on to concerts. First up, Barrett Wilbert Weed is heading to the London Palladium. She is doing a new show under the banner Dear Diary, a clear reference to her role from the musical Heathers. And she invites fans through a trip through the spooky corridors of her mind. As she offers an intimate look at music, stories, ghosts and monsters that have shaped her career in a night of theatre and indie pop, as this press release states. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> this is being produced and presented by Lambert Jackson and will be staged at the London Palladium on a very fitting date, the 1st of September. All of the Heathers fans are nodding in appreciation right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you want to catch Wobbit Weed, you can go and see her. And the other concert that was announced this week, also being produced by Lambert Jackson, is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. This is also being done at the London Palladium, but this time it's happening in November. We got a little, little bit longer to wait for this one. This is, of course, the musical with a score by David Yazbek and book by Jeffrey Lane. This uh, premiered in Brawl... In Broadway? On Broadway. In Broadway sounds wrong. In the West End, on Broadway. This <laughs> this was on Broadway in 2005, and I, I, it has premiered over here. I swear it transferred at some point. I don't remember it. I was too young. But this is returning to the West End for two shows only on Sunday, the 24th of November at 2.30pm and 7.30pm as well. This is also a 20th anniversary concert, as this marks 20 years since the musical's premiere at the Old Globe Theatre in San Diego. Very cool. This is also starring some very cool theatre names, including Ramin Karanlu as Freddie Benson and Hadley Fraser as Lawrence Jamieson. They will be joined by icon legend the moment Carly Mercedes Dyer as Christine, Janie D, who is also an icon of legend the moment, as Muriel, and Rufus Hound as Inspector Andre. And also, just tucked to the bottom, I didn't even see this one, Lauren Drew. That's really cool. As Jolene. That's quite a cool cast. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm into it. I'm here for it. So if you want to go catch Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, you can do it. At, you got two chances. Two chances on the same day. 24th of November. Go and do it. Hi, big theatre announcement. Uh, this this is breaking news on Watson Stage. A hit review, Sondheim on Sondheim, James Lapine's review celebrating composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim, is going to be performed at the Alexandra Palace Theatre later this year. This uh, is literally breaking on Watson Stage right now. This is why you are seeing the Watson Stage article. Thank you to Watson Stage for this fantastic journalism. <laughs> this is a celebration of Stephen Sondheim's music. Uh, features songs from West Side Story, Companies, Follies, Into the Woods, and it has a fantastic cast. Who are Fra Fee, Georgina Honora, Jenna Russell, and Scarlett Stralen, with further casting to be announced. And if they match, if they match that cast, oh boy, this is going to be good. This is going to be playing at this theatre on Sunday the 20th of October and Monday the 21st of October. So if you want to catch some sun time, as I definitely do, you can go and book your tickets for this on Monday the 10th of June at 10am. Woohoo! This is probably the fastest I've put a news story into one of these videos. Let's go. Anyway, back to past me. And now we can move on to our miscellaneous news of the week. First off, really quickly, present laughter. Did, did you like it when it was at the Old Vic? Did you like it when it was filmed? Did you miss it when it was filmed? Well, guess what? You can see it again in cinemas. Yes, the Andrew Scott-led production of Present Laughter is returning to cinemas on the 18th of July through National Theatre Live. So if you would like to see some National Theatre Theatre, you can go to your cinema. It's probably doing a performance near you. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That's not guaranteed, but I'm sure you can look it up. <laughs> a really cool uh, miscellaneous announcement this week was a new album called Schwartz Songs. This is going to feature loads of different music from Stephen Schwartz's catalogue and features a wide variety of West End talent including Marisha Wallace, Trevor Dion Nicholas, Samantha Barks, Jim Moscato, Lucy Jones, Louise Dearman, Kerry Ellis, Rachel Tucker, Billy Luke Nevers, John Owen Jones, Oliver Thompson, Rob Houchin, Heba El Sheik, Alice Fern, Rachel John, Peter Joback, Jamie Lambert, Jordan Luke Gage, and Emma Kingston, which is a chunky list. And it has been announced that Ellis, Fern, Jones, and Tucker, who have all been Alphaba at one point or another, will feature in a new version of Defying Gravity, which will be released as a single on the 21st of June 2024. And then the whole album will be released as a CD and a digital release as well. That was phrased weirdly on the 28th of June and will also be dropping on double vinyl on the 9th of August. This is really cool. This is so cool. I love Stephen Swartz. I love Swartz's music. And honestly, with a talent 
on that album. Oh. Oh. Serve. Can't wait. And finally, in miscellaneous news this week, we have some more details for Slave Play. Now, Slave Play previously announced that it will be doing a weekly pay-what-you-can lottery. And they have announced the details for this. So if you are interested in going to see Slave Play and you want to get a good deal on it, here is how you can do that. Starting on the 26th of June 2024, 30 tickets will be released for each performance the following week at £1 and above. So this is a pay what you can. So you can pay a pound, you can pay 20 pound, you essentially pay what you can, which is a great scheme to allow theatre to be even more accessible. Those interested in this scheme can sign up via the show's website. There is also going to be day seating as well. There's 10 seats released on the morning of each performance at 20 pound each. These being limited to a maximum of two per person. So many great schemes here. Really great to see them make this show even more accessible. We love to see it. And finally, we can move on to transfers and new productions. This has been quite a breezy theatre week. I feel like I've done quite well recording this video. And now I've said that, I'm going to screw something up. <laughs> First up, we got a really cool announcement this week, and that is that Thursday Murder Club, Richard Osman's best-selling book, will be getting an adaptation. We have no details for this. We know it's coming to the stage. When? Where? <laughs> Don't ask me. They haven't told me. I'm not psychic. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that they are aiming to open this in 2025, and it is being worked on in collaboration with Osman and Tom Badston, who you may know for working on the smash hit Accidental Death of an Anarchist, which I heard nothing but good things about, so immediately I'm like, yes, I am here for it. This is really cool. A great adaptation? I hope so. Fingers crossed. Next up, we got a really cool community project to celebrate 40 years of Les Mis. I'm just going to read this press release because it kind of says what it does in the tin. Cameron McIntosh and MTI have announced a UK-wide amateur theatre project called Let the People Sing. This initiative runs from March to August 2025 and features 11 community-wide productions across the country. This is the first time that amateur groups in the UK have been invited to do the full show of Lame Mids while it continues its successful run in London's West End. The selected cities that will be performing are Belfast, Birmingham, Brighton, Bristol, there's a lot of bees, uh, Glasgow, Leeds, Liverpool, Nottingham, Norwich, Cornwall, and Swansea. Each of the 11 amateur societies will act as lead producers in their respective venues, collaborating with other local groups to produce these community-wide productions and they will receive support and guidance from West End and international associate creative teams to develop their own original non-replica productions. This is a really cool thing. If you are anywhere near these areas and you want to get involved in amateur theatre, this is probably one of the biggest opportunities that has been presented for amateur theatre in a long time. This is really, really cool to see. It's a great way to celebrate and a really different way to celebrate. It's 40 years of Les Mis, so yeah, let's go. Can't wait for that. I'll have to try and travel. I'm quite far from all of these. Maybe Norwich. Norwich is probably closest to me. Next up, we have our first season of the new artistic director of the Kiln Theatre, Amit Sharma. This season spans from September to next year. I think May next year. So we've got a pretty sizable season to talk about here. Launching the season from the 19th of September to the 26th of October will be Pins and Needles, directed by Sharma himself. This piece explores the politics around vaccines through the microcosm of a handful of human experiences and stories. Then we get a European premiere of The Purist that is running from the 14th of November to the 21st of December 2024. This is a New York-based comedy which focuses on the themes of race, sexuality and music through the interactions of a legendary MC, a Hall of Fame DJ, a musical lover, that's me, and two rap-battling women. It's not me. It's not actually me. But I do like music. <laughs> Next up, we have a production of The Lonely Londoners, which will be running from the 10th of January to the 15th of February 2025, transferring from the German Street Theatre. 
This piece examines the hopes, dreams, and harsh realities of the Windrush generation. As Trinidadian, Henry Sir Galahad Oliver arrives in London in the 1950s, and next spring, the kiln will present the world premiere of Shanghai Dolls from April to May 2025. This is a new play that tells the untold story of two friends who become two of the most influential women in Chinese history. This is a really cool and really diverse season. I am very hopeful that I'll be able to check some of it out. Next up, we have a workshop to talk about. A new musical called We Aren't Kids Anymore has announced performers for their workshop production. I've put it in here, even though this is technically a casting announcement because I haven't spoken about this yet. So this is a autobiographical musical. It is based on a concept album that was released in 2020 and explores themes of self-discovery and complexities with human life. And the cast includes Roshani Abbey, Johnny Fiore, Chelsea Halfpenny, Josh St. Clair, and Archie Atch Wiley. This is being done in a closed workshop production, so if you want to catch this musical, I guess you've got to just keep your ear out. If they're workshopping it, that should hopefully spell a future life for this musical. Next up, a new musical that you can check out is The Fabulous. This is heading to the London stage, specifically the Charing Cross Theatre, from the 12th of August to the 21st of September 2024. This is featuring music by Giovanni Paciello and a book and lyrics by James P. Farwell. This is based off Giovanni's opera, The Imaginary Astrologer. The world premiere musical comedy is set in 1929 Italy, where Julian, an illusionist and outlawed heretic, is on the run for Mussolini and the Catholic Church. This is very interesting. This is very bold as well. So if you want to catch a new musical, you can head to the Charing Cross Theatre this summer. And also a little bit of autumn, because it crosses over into September. And finally, in news this week, we have Dear England. Dear England's back, and it's back in a really cool way. So, it has been announced that next year we'll see a return for Dear England. It's going back to the National Theatre, specifically the Olivier Theatre as part of the National, from the 10th of March to the 24th of May, 2025. And this will be followed by a four-week run at the Lowry in Salford from the 29th of May to the 29th of June 2025. Something really cool that was announced in this press release, though, is that they are reworking the show a little bit. If you saw The England in its previous uh, production, you'll know that it ends with them looking forward to the future and looking forward to the 2024 Euros, if I'm correct. I don't know football that well. But, obviously, by the time this returns, that will have all happened. We will know if England wins or loses. And they're going to rework the ending of the show to include that part of Gareth Southgate's tenure of England. For a show that already adapted the story to fit what was happening at the time, it's really cool to see them further the life of this show and continue to work on it. I think it is already a fairly long show though, so I don't know how much time they're going to be able to spend on a lot of this new content that's going to happen over the upcoming summer, but this is really intriguing and a really cool idea to keep this show growing. And that is all your theatre news for this week. What are you looking forward to? What are you most excited for? Honestly, I'm kind of excited for Dear England's return. I actually really enjoyed that play. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out, helps out the channel. Here's some links to some other videos on the screen right now and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.